Holy smokes, what the flippity flip flap flop is going on with the world supply chains. Things have just gone from bad to worse. They told us, don't worry, these are just temporary issues. And this is just going to lead to a temporary spike in inflation. Well, how many times have we heard from the government, don't fear, it's just temporary. Well, it looks like the problem with the global supply chains aren't temporary. And it looks like inflation isn't going to be transitory. And I've got proof, data, facts that we're going to get into this video that shows how much of a dire situation we are in right now and everybody listening we all need to prepare for this okay everybody let's get straight into it have a look at this everybody the world economy supply chain problem just keeps getting worse shipping shortages are sparking bidding wars by factory owners and rising costs push exporters to raise prices stroking inflation this is crazy everybody what you have to know is at the ports with the manufacturers uh, at the docks there is fierce bidding wars for these freights freight prices are going through the roof which we'll get into in a moment and all these companies are saying we're going to be raising prices so it says here a supply train crunch that was meant to be temporary now looks like it will last well into next year as a surging delta variant upends factory production in asia and disrupts shipping posing more shocks to the world economy well, what have we seen everyone we're seeing with the harsh lockdowns which again i'll get into in a moment in china they've been shutting down their ports and it's been causing huge congestion at the ports and if these goods can't get out to the retailers for the festive season this is going to have big consequences on the global economy so manufacturers are reeling from shortages of key components and high raw material and energy costs and are being forced into bidding wars to get space on vessels pushing freight rates to records and prompting some experts to raise prices or simply cancel shipments altogether. So I'm sure you've all noticed that the prices of things are going up with your daily or weekly uh, shopping trip, but these freight price increases absolutely crazy and it's going to take a while for it to trickle down to us consumers. This is what one chief executive uh, said. We can't get enough components. We can't get containers. Costs have been driven up tremendously. So we're having companies right now, they're trying to scramble just to get components to make their products. And of course, this means at the wholesale and manufacturer level, prices are going to go up and then that will flow on to us. But also China's determination to stamp out the illness has meant even a small number of cases can cause major disruptions to trade. This month, the government temporarily closed down part of the world's third busiest container port at Ningbu for two weeks after a single dock worker has found to have the variant. Earlier this year, waves in Shenzhen were idled after the discovery of a handful of cases. So what we're continuing to see is the global supply chains is so fragile. And what we're seeing now with the illness getting worse around the world, this is causing big, big issues, especially in Asia, where a lot of the goods are made. And with the very strict restrictions, if all these cases keep coming up, I don't know what they're going to do. So poor congestion and a shortage of container shipping capacity may last into the fourth quarter or even mid-2022. So again, everyone, don't worry, it's only temporary. Well, if it goes into mid-2022, well, that's going to be over a year and a half of temporary transitory inflation. The world's seventh biggest container liner at an investor briefing on August 20th, if the pandemic cannot be effectively contained, poor congestion may become the new normal. So again, this is what I keep hearing, the new normal. What is going to be the new normal, everybody? We're seeing things with global trade deteriorating, more lockdowns around the world, confidence is going through the gutter it's still very uncertain on what this new normal is going to be now listen to this everyone this is crazy and this is going to lead to prices skyrocketing the cost of sending a container from asia to europe is about 10 times higher than in may 2020 that's right 10 times higher just to send goods around while the cost from shanghai to los angeles has grown more than sixfold so again, all you people around LA, California, let me know if you've been seeing your prices increasing. So the global supply chain has become so fragile that a single small incident could easily have its effect compounded, HSBC Holdings said in a note. 
So as we can see here in this chart, everybody, the uh, red line is Shanghai to Rotterdam uh, route, and the red line is the Shanghai to Los Angeles. And we can see here in 2020, um, you know, it was around 2.8K um, with the blue line. The red line was around 4,000. And we can see uh, the blue line that's gone up about 10 times. And like they said, uh, the Shanghai to Los Angeles has gone up about six times. So to me, this looks like borderline hyperinflation here, everyone. So higher freight rates and semiconductor prices could feed into inflation. This is huge, everyone, because there's so much things going on around the world that is out of the Federal Reserve's control. We've got surging cases around the world. Now we've got this global supply chain issue. Really, they're backed into a corner because printing more money can't solve these two problems. In addition, producers including Taiwan's giant manufacturing co, the world's biggest bicycle maker, says they will raise prices to reflect the increased costs. And you better believe more businesses are going to be doing this. So the spread of the illness, especially in Southeast Asia, is making it difficult for many factories to operate at all. In Vietnam, the world's second largest producer of footwear and clothing, the government has ordered manufacturers to allow workers, this is crazy, to sleep in the factories to try to keep up exports moving. So this is absolutely crazy. You're having people in Asia having to sleep in the factories. And also what I'm hearing um, from workers, you know, in the Philippines and other parts of Asia, in the call centers, again, they're forced to sleep at their work just to keep the goods for the rest of the world going around and also to keep the company's uh, operations around the world going. So even mighty Toyota Motor Corp is affected. The automaker warned this month it will suspend output at 14 plants across Japan and slash production by 40% due to supply chain disruptions, including chip shortages. And what is this leading to everybody? This is leading to used cars are going up through the roof. Used cars in America month over month have been going up something like 10% and are up over 40% year over year. And if this issue isn't fixed, you know, the housing market may become unaffordable. It may even become unaffordable for people just to buy a used car. So one client had more than 70 containers of goods sitting at a warehouse in Shenzhen because the American buyer didn't want to pay the shipping costs. Sung said 60 to 70% of his clients have cut shipments due to rising costs. You can look at this chart here, everyone. It says uh, bottlenecks at the Key West Coast ports have lingered since November, and the number of anchored container ships waiting to offload at LA Long Beach. Look at this, everybody. It is at an all-time high. There's 40 ships anchored there just waiting to offload goods at LA. So Chinese companies that spent decades shifting production of lower value components to cheaper labor markets in South and Southeast Asia now face a headache of trying to get those parts to factories where they can be assembled into finished products. So it says here we're talking about a lot of money just to move things around. As factories succumb to lockdowns, manufacturers are now forced into a game of whack-a-mole, switching raw materials from one country to another. Some have resorted to air freighting materials such as leather to factories to keep production lines rolling. This is quite worrying everybody and this is why we have to prepare because more supply shortages could be coming. And we don't know if this could lead into essential items. So what I recommend for you to do, because it's not looking like this issue is going to be fixed anytime soon, is get a list of all the things, the mandatory things you need now and go ahead and buy them now. And we'll get into a moment about Christmas presents because we just don't know what the future holds with these supply chain disruptions. Meanwhile, Deputy Chairman of Federal of Hong Kong Industries is trying to figure out how he'll fill festive display windows in time for Christmas. And it's not just him, everybody. Uh, Kamala Harris says, says, if you want to get Christmas uh, gifts for your children, now is the time to start buying because of these supply shortages are going to come. It says here, the stories that we are now hearing about the caution that if you want to have Christmas toys for your children, it might be time to start buying them because the delay may be many, many months. So everyone, what this means for you and me is these supply chain problems are just getting worse. And this has just really showed how fragile our supply chains are. And this shows what happens when you just offshore everything to the cheapest place and while they need to have some kind of backup system to be able to manufacture goods in our own countries and this means the price of the things are going to keep going up 
and it's going to put more and more pressure on the Federal Reserve to taper its balance sheet. And who knows if things do get out of control and prices do start skyrocketing, the Federal Reserve may have no choice but to start lifting interest rates sooner than it said, which will have big effects on the housing market and the stock market. But everyone, if you work in these industries, let me know and let everyone in the comments down below if you're seeing these issues. Now for all my loyal viewers and subscribers still watching, you're awesome. If you haven't already, please tap that like and subscribe button. I'll keep you up to date with the latest that's happening in the stock market, housing market and global finance news. And if you're bored, I'll put up some other videos here. I'll see you all there.